Let's talk about the scary sexual secrets of a woman that is key to problem-solving man's sexuality. First, I would like to mention that in today's society, there are basically six major categories of individuals who are sexually active, generally by their own free will. And they are, one, consensual adults and or teens experimenting with sex, two, monogamous couples or partners who are sexually active, three, couples or individuals who are sexually active without commitment, four, swingers that are often involved in random group sex, five, individuals that sell sex for money or trade, including pornographic performers, and lastly, individuals that solely masturbate with or without objects or exhibition. But let's focus on monogamous couples or partners who are sexually active. By design, women will always have the most powerful domination of sexual control on the planet that gives them the man power to problem solve man's sexuality. The problem? Many devoted men being unjustly sexually rejected by their partner that causes them to have emotional confusion and hormonal chaos. The solution? Truly relies in the sexual secrets of a woman, explained later, uh, that are very manipulating by nature and the fact that no man can alter them makes them very, very scary. Men are therefore at the mercy of a woman's decision for her to accept moral responsibility to resolve his sexual problem by her first deciding not to take part in being part of the problem. A woman must first understand and accept the truth of her full sexual function by nature, including her limitations when compared to a man's greater sexual appetite. However, if our culture beliefs were changed and a woman's sexual appetite was indeed deemed to be inadequate, the truth would then hit home and become a very hard pill to swallow for the average woman. Many women will falsely interpret these inadequacies to be sexist remarks and try to discredit or deflect the truth by changing society's way of thinking that the information is false and they are simply victims of woman bashing. Oddly enough, if a woman claims that most men do too much thinking with the wrong head, she would be right. But it does not mean that she's a sexist or male bashing either. It means she found it to be a scientific fact and merely spoke the truth that men think about sex way too much on a daily basis. Though many men may still accuse her of being a sexist by stereotyping them like this. Ironically, Mother Earth can almost be construed as being a sexist herself due to the scientific fact of her creating heterosexuals with a global bias perception that human beings with vaginas are not as capable as human beings with penises, as is suggested by her biological design of both sexes. Nonetheless, we must have an open mind and understand other scientific facts that over recent years, men have increasingly become more sexually needy and women sexually greedy. A vast amount of women are greedy just by deliberately being more indulging and accessible to a man's sexual needs. Women are not literally greedy for the act of sex, but it appears that way because sex is the path they use to motivate men to accommodate their needs. In this case, and aside from oversexed young females who freely explore their sexual fantasies, uh, there is a trend that most mature adult women today are seeking male partnership at a faster pace, more than ever, for physical protection, stability, financial security, and or even to start a family. This faster pace, however, is mostly encouraged by our broken society of a political biased government causing more economic chaos, urban stress, and hardship living. Therefore, other than those wanting a soulmate strictly based on religious philosophy or their own interpretations. A woman's strategy is to quickly encourage a man to willfully embellish her lifestyle in part by her using sex appeal and by establishing mutual interest in many things, including sports. Social media is the best uh, practical playground for a woman to have acceptance of her sexual ambition. And since she is always on a competitive mission to meet and greet, a viable man, it is not uncommon that countless women these days are clearly more aggressive, promiscuous, shameless, and bold. Our environment is literally pregnant with a more liberal philosophy of sexual freedom that is expressed and displayed in strategic ways to quicken a man's plan of action. 
apparently old school feminine enticement takes too long these days for a woman to become a man's benefactor. Her new school aggressive behavior is now the forerunning routine of connecting or bonding with a man. However, once this bond is born either by righteous passion or the battle of the sexist strategy, man's need for sex is still subjected to deprivation, depreciation, or outright rejection as a woman possessing man power will demonstrate in more ways than one. For most new relationships, sexual relations is essentially the greatest pastime over any other activity. But as they pass through time into an ongoing routine of sex, committed couples, and primarily women, may eventually lose their enthusiasm and become sexually dormant most of the time, mainly due to an emotional disconnect. The man would describe his sweetheart as to being on some sort of a sex fast. Uh, unless, of course, she has an ongoing high sex drive that is matched with his, in which case would be a unique love connection. Therefore, problem-solving man's sexuality would not exist as long as her highly sexed hormones are consistent with his. Nonetheless, from girlfriend to fiancé, the average woman's sexuality is initially her top priority mainly to encourage a permanent partnership of good fortune. Sooner or later, though, it is mainly the woman of the relationship that mandates a change in her sexual priorities that gradually shifts toward other domestic doings with intimacy becoming the least important benefit or obligation. In spite of this and depending on cultural beliefs, men all over the world are naturally sexually driven and compelled to offer a great deal of mental and physical resources uh, to his significant other in an ongoing effort, hoping sooner or later that his works will please her enough to stimulate intimacy or sexual interest. Now men, you have to admit this is true. Uh, she's showing let interest lets him know uh, his efforts are clearly recognized and have a significant value, and this is important to a man. Even men with health issues with vigorous urges continue to be viable and diligent through their stress and struggle to maintain a diplomatic bond and sexual connection. Yet most of these men remain vexed with confusion about the sexual standards of a woman and why she rejects him uh, sexually even when no domestic drama exists. Men feel that many seasoned wives or faithful women are sexually short-sighted with no justifiable reason to regulate intimacy with less activity. Uh, for example, oftentimes when the husband desires to be more sexually active, it becomes a problem for his spouse. Also, in retrospect to his common ailments, she may rarely feel 100% herself to warrant efforts to engage in sex and will inadvertently choose to sleep many times after managing her responsibilities. But isn't the husband or a significant her responsibility too? And worth the sacrifice for an intimate time out? Especially since she routinely sacrifices or pushes herself to do other domestic business. She willfully attends friends and family affairs or other recreational functions that seem to have more priority while she remains under these same ailing conditions with an occasional sudden headache or that time of the month, which may be true on occasion. Uh, these justifications are just added to her arsenals of adversity or rejection. Uh, when she's in the mood and clearly her spouse is not, or he is not, then he has the same obligation to give her a sexual time out. Although unlike him, she is unlikely to encourage it due to her hormones being less aggressive. And that's by nature. Still, at the end of the day, if the wife is not in the mood, she will not think about how important the husband's biological needs are and end up in a sex fasting routine. She would have to be very emotionally tied and have a lot of respect for her husband's or significant sexual, uh, sexuality before feeling sexually obligated enough to alter her mood. A man, as a man reaches his sexual peak though, his hormones may be less aggressive, suggesting to her that she may no longer need sex fasting. Nope. Not at all. Science today has perverted the natural laws of man's sexual proclivities to remain hyperactive. Her sex fasting may therefore continue all, uh, after all as surgery, sexual devices, prescriptions, organic therapeutic solutions are available to extend man's prostate or sex life. Uh, contrary to man's nature, it is a woman's nature that has trained his mind and body to remain steadfast in this animal attraction to always want extended years of sexual involvement with her. Otherwise, with all things being equal, by nature, the woman's sexual peak would far exceed the pace of a man's sexual activity. 
In the meantime, it may interest women to know that simple pleasures of sexual intimacy goes a long way in nurturing a man's mind and has an even greater impact giving positive energy to the husband that feels stressed and somber most of his days. And in challenging times, it will potentially uplift the man's spirit, uh, reduce his stress, and make him feel that his wife and toils of life are worth enduring. And as a leader, help strengthen his mental state to be more reasonable or benevolent, even when confronted with domestic issues. She simply owes it to herself to make him the hero of her legacy. Remember, the wife or the like is like a helpmate and is generally considered a better half uh, or the better half of wisdom and common sense. So if it is that difficult for the wife to be sexually compliant, then she should remodel her love to have a bigger heart and understand the fact that man's sexual hormones by nature, and in most cases, drives him to need more sexual gratification than that of a woman. It is discouraging enough when she makes an effort to bond and fakes or ignores uh, sexual stimulation with a less sex drive in the first place, which is no wonder why she subconsciously feels that she's making a big sacrifice or a one-sided reward or charity, unless of course he has ED, erectile dysfunction, which under these circumstances wouldn't be, would null and void any notion of a sex fast anyway. Women alike typically discourage or ignore their man's display of sexual hints or bonding efforts. You know, I'm sure men, we've done this, we do this all the time. You know, these hints and they typically get ignored or sidetracked. Uh, so man, he tends to shy away from, from her to find ways to deflect his interest, you know. Uh, his inapp solution is to use the out of sight, out of mind logic that will unfortunately push their enthusiasm even further apart. Many husbands with a consistent sex drive truly feel that a wife's act or rejection or refusal um, is often understood as being similar to sexual extortion. Think about it. Since she is aware of his need to satisfy his powerful sexual urge, he is therefore extorted when he is made to believe that he must bring something more to the table uh, to have sex than just a commitment. In all fairness, the wife should modify her sexual bonding to be unconditional, unless of course there are just a justified circumstances to the contrary, uh, rather than waiting until she is in the mood to achieve her own sexual gratification that may be few and far between, while sexual toys may be more prevalent and frequent, if you know what I mean. Oddly enough, the <clears throat> husband's stronger desire makes his sexual activity unconditional by nature, and anything weaker inherits conditional sex, as a wife's behavior demonstrates. If his mind, body, and soul are not naturally sufficient enough to motivate her, then her sexual limitation provokes her to need more stimulation by way of romance, physical spoils, funding, barter, labor, or all of the above. And thus, it is man's human, human nature to oblige her willingly as a slave of love. Incidentally, the strongest tool or tactic the woman needs to pledge to sustain his willingness is to, con be, is to consistently be nice and kind to him, even though sustaining this behavior can be quite a challenge at various times. Strategy. Think about it, women. Still, it is a powerful gesture as most women are simply too uncompromising to realize that, if nothing else, men are very sentimental by this graceful behavior as it will go a long way to motivate him to want to please her in any way that he can and, and that and will not be contingent to trade-offs. Uh, it is therefore the key behavior of a woman that will motivate his labor of love. Even her sex fast can be more e uh, easily forgiven as well as soothing the savage beast in him at times of domestic conflict. Uh, most women, however, choose to challenge a man's leadership rather than using this strategy to touch his feminine side. Her own feminine side wants to regulate and limit sex to have more control rather than being nice because she believes that most men are weak and can't control their urges. There is some truth to that. I mean, it can be controlled, but it takes, it takes some effort. But hear us out. It is a very convenient, convenient excuse anyway with half-truths. Uh, but disclosure work, work, uh, works both ways when the wife or committed partner in turn 
does not manipulate or control her weaker urge to be stronger to support the husband's sexual needs. You see how another way you can look at this situation? Uh, in truth, her nature lacks the hormonal makeup to have the enthusiasm to desire sex unconditionally as men do. And that's ordered by nature. Yet it is her judgment that prevails in society, though, as man's logic is trumped by his own nature needing to sexually procreate. It's just a part of his nature he can't help. It's destined. Furthermore, it is the wife that controls or attempts to control the husband's sexual urges and totally disregard his predatory nature that tends to give him ongoing frustration that he often hides. When it is revealed, the wife simply does not understand his frustration or opposing behavior and believes he's just willfully being greedy or too needy for sex. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Not all, but the majority of women are in denial that their sexual drive is weaker and falsely assumes that a man's sexual urge should be no different than theirs, with celibacy being an easy option and sexual intimacy being a minor act that can always wait. Now see, that's pairing man to themselves. So not at all. To trust such an assessment with no way to experience what a man feels without being a man is obtuse and irresponsible but also naive with innocence since it is a woman's instinct to base things on her own physical experience. I mean, what else, is all, what else does she have to go by? And she tend to, but she tends to be too stubborn to accept or put faith in what she can't understand to respect man's outrageous sex drive. You know, the noblest strategy <clears throat> a woman uses to avoid sex while in bed is convincing her partner that they do not need sex to define their love and they can just hold or embrace each other to express it. It's not needed all the time, that's in her mind. Men tend to comply because it suggests her challenging his ability to control his sensational urge as she attempts to hide the fact that she has little to no urge at all at that particular time. In reality though, come on man, we are not trying to prove their love with a hold or embrace. Uh, they are trying to make love while she's wearing gold or pink lace. And her clever diversion of embracing him, however, adds to her irresistible control to use sex appeal as sexual power, as long as she's looked upon by man as being supplied for his demand. To suppress sex is simply not man's nature, but in spite of his striving commitment, her sexual standards and control continuously provokes him to be deeply spellbound as he once again freely agrees to become, become her ongoing slave of love, or labor of love, if you will. Uh, if he is not offering the gift of human life, then he must offer her other gifts of a kind to the wife. She knows that men are often obliged to adjust their actions and attitude uh, that must meet her conditions and comfort level as a trade-off before she gives consent to sexual bonding, and we know this. When her needs are not met, self-masturbation becomes a common option, as her disputing partner sometimes encouraged, uh, is encouraged to sleep elsewhere, or like the couch, for example, or another room. Most women like this are comfortable with their inherited ability to possess man power, or power over men, to manipulate and often redirect the behavior of men that are never inclined to relinquish this power due to its other additional advantages. A woman's greatest control is a man's greatest weakness, his sexual urge. Man's sexual appetite or urge may be under a woman's influence, but it's not necessarily a weakness by nature considering the fact that it is a woman's sexual behavior that sets the tone for a self-made stigma in society, giving her the authority to determine how a man should conduct his sexual function based on her personal standards. After all, women are just about half the population with the leading influence on sexual ethics as they were also the leading influence before the writings of the Bible's Old and New Testament. To give a model example, Imagine his intense sex urge is like extremely, being extremely thirsty, and according to his body mass, say he needs two full glasses of drinking water to avoid suffering dehydration. Unfortunately, the wife only gives him a glass half full because she was never concerned that he works daily in nature's hot sun, key word is nature, and therefore never makes an effort to buy more water when she shops. When he complains about it, 
It tends to be repetitive old news, and she would therefore always remind him of how much extra money the, uh, she could save over time to buy other things. Well, this is just a way of understanding how the context of man's sexual needs are downplayed without priority and how oblivious the wife is to organic product needed for life support. She demands a higher standard from him when compared to her labels of uh, various domestic chores that does not challenge her to labor for a sexual climax. Consequently, his need for a sexual climax, climax is influenced by intense instinctive urges that are about as difficult to resist as a woman uh, trying to resist her hot flashes. Oh yeah. Uh, it is therefore easy to see how the husband or committed men in general is being spellbound by feminine persuasion. It is also ironic, however, that she is spellbound or plagued by her own genetic makeup to require more sexual or more freaky stimulation. And the husband in turn is spellbound by her seductive endowments to convince him that she is the only one available by marital law to exclusively satisfy his driven urge as long as he is in her favor. A man having intense urges of this magnitude can almost be considered having a curse since nature is consistently challenging man's ability to suppress them. Again, his resolve is out of sight, out of mind. Note when Adam first awakened from birth or sleep in the Garden of Eden and was no longer blinded or out of sight. His first captivating sight was the beauty of the flesh that gave him the instinctive knowledge of his sexual senses and the spellbound awareness of what his secular body was compelled to do, resulting in him being fruitful with generations of labor to follow. For most women, nonetheless, it is apparent that there is no such thing as unconditional love making in whatever garden she lives in, unless she was born with uh, insatiable sex urges that would minimize her emotional needs. Unlike men, though, she would be unjustly labeled as a nympho, whore, freak, or even a freak of nature, gay dyke, if she has masculine traits. You would find that most of these women that are highly sex like that, they would tend to be involved in uninhibited group sex, wife swapping, swingers clubs, drug manipulation, sexual fantasies, or friends with sexual benefits, but, gen, gen, uh, but generally not porno or prostitution because these acts are motivated by financial gain and not orgasms, trust me. Uh, however, a wife's unevenly yoked conditional sexual standards are somewhat similar to certain acts of prostitution. Think about it. Uh, the wife is always in a constant state of soliciting the husband for one thing or another in her own way. And yes, society will deem this to be, you know, a legal, ethical, and natural behavior as long as she has one partner. Most hus husbands will admit to not having sexual gratification without representation, meaning without material wealth of a kind, or to coin a phrase, I'm sure you all have heard, no, ro no romance without finance. Although labor and security are viable subsidies as well. This is not suggesting that the wife does not have a fair amount of sacred virtues and principles that are generally suppressed by the escort woman. The reference here is that she is committed to only one man and forbids him to become a bait for other escorts soliciting or bachelorette women, although, it's, although he is still subjected to being sexually rejected by her. Once again, the husband is confused due to the wife's emotional requirements that is so complex that it random, randomly changes making it difficult for him to inspire more frequent sexual stimulation. Uh, this inherited act of a woman, unfortunately, it, it creates <clears throat> insecurity in most men because he will minimize asking for sex to avoid numerous rejections. Let's talk about that word. Rejections are an insult to his pride that is often humiliating and embarrassing, especially when he gets rejected by the many ways she displays it from her mental and physical behavior without even saying the word no. Uh, this can hurt the morale of the committed relationship or marriage uh, as some men feel sexually deceived, cheated, and trapped within his uh, pool of emotional ties with little appreciation to his worth. Constant denial really does strip him of his ego or virile image. He therefore truly feels the effects of the ball and chain syndrome. He is uh, also uh, offended that even when the wife is not in the mood and decides to give him sexual gratification, uh, again, she construes it to be an enormous effort as many committed women do. 
uh, he would prefer it to be a will for obligation by both partners rather than it being on some form of a one-sided physical violation to her body. Uh, uh, but that is but that is wishful thinking and, and, and is unfortunately not the mainstream behavior of women. Uh, man's logic dictates why be reluctant since a sexual climate climax is an intense thrill for both partners. A woman's logic is if the itch isn't strong enough, why scratch it without a prize for the initial work effort? If she has a personal desire for it, then she would act like a lady but think like a man. In spite of sexual complaints toward women, they truly have the ability to change their mindset to share sexual authority equally without deception. Understanding man's nature is to realize the significance of his sexual aggression, you know, that demands a constant mission to initiate procreation. We can't help that. That's nature. He genetically inherits a sexual urge that is too powerful to ignore. Although most men will never discuss this because it depicts him to be sexually weak, vulnerable, or out of control, and once again with a stripped virile image. Even the male species of animals have sensation has a sensational sex, sexual drive and by nature will and by natural instinct I would say will aggressively copulate with the opposite sex continuously without self-control. At the risk of overtaxing the woman's sexual nature a man is encouraged to control or tone down his activity unless of course her sexual urge is already matched with his in which case there is no contest you know Instead of having sex every day, for example, he would compromise with his mate, opting for, say, every other day. A man desiring sexual activity every, every other day can compromise his activity for twice weekly. Twice weekly may be compromised for once a week. Keep in mind that his compromise is based on his own insatiable sex drive that will vary from man to man, but will still elicit to be more frequent than what most women want. Young, excuse me, young men who are at their sexual prime are easily most challenged. It is rare, however, that any man is privileged to have sex frequent enough to match the full extent of his uh, sensational urge. Uh, but his spouse may mistakenly measure this full extent to be, say, twice per week, when his true biological need would be twice daily. Hmm? She will therefore initiate an unfair compromise with the wrong assessment by mistakenly meeting him, say, halfway for sexual activity to be only once per week. Although in most cases, most women today do not compromise and mainly have sex when they decide, even if it's just every few months. <laughs> this can be quite a difficult scenario to know what would be fair activity between couples. But in all practical fairness, biological needs should have the priority. Come on, this is ordered by nature. Men, therefore, should be given the benefit of the doubt because, once again, his hormones are designed to greatly intensify his urge, thus giving him the natural overwhelming need to spawn. She must let him be the one to define his level of sexual enthusiasm because it is his body and no one knows it better. Be it as it may, and unlike, not unlike the wife, when the husband is intimate or sexually active with her, it is also his closest security bond that maintains his sense of belonging or being needed except as a man he is primarily compelled to serve and protect using all of his physical and mental resources available. This philosophy is true for any man dedicated to a lifelong mission that is beneficial to him and his spouse or significant other. The bottom line that men in general are not really sexually respected by the majority of women and thus have to work hard mentally and physically if they want to truly satisfy their sexual urges. A committed, insecure woman giving less sexual activity to a partner will favor his efforts to work harder because, uh, to, um, because to consider having sex more often is taboo in her mind. As less sex gives her more work days off, so to speak, especially when she is not in the mood and her sexual enthusiasm is subtle most of the time. In truth, many women that are pressured to have more sex than they desire are apprehensive and paranoid by their own insecure delusions that they may be simulating a lifestyle of a pro bono whore who allows herself to be taken advantage of with no respect or real value to her sexual nature that will soon become powerless. Oh boy. 
On the other hand, as long as their sexual activity is minimized and secure with steady bedroom cuddles and is also given ongoing reassurances that their virtues are with high standards and contributions or assets are offered to support their well-being, they will then sustain their integrity and feel secure with having significant value as a lady, equal to the value of her significant man. As many women have adopted this mindset, it, is unfor it unfortunately flips the script to stereotype men. Many detractors label men to have a horse nature and are therefore deemed to be sexually powerless due to their willingness to share unconditional, indiscriminate, and unprincipled sex without the need for emotional ties or even worldly trade-offs from a single woman. Horish men benefit only an orgasm, and horish women benefits are mostly money, material, with an orgasm being last, excluding uh, highly sexed women as described earlier. If they both, however, can share and, and inherit something more permanent in their sexual involvement with spiritual values instead of man-made artistries, then no one has to feel cheap, victimized, whorish, or worthless. The most popular reason why many heterosexual men sleep around or fornicate um, is due to being sexually deprived by a sexual partner and or she no longer shows the interest or eagerness to motivate him. This behavior dampens a man's spirit and willingness to be generous. For this reason, his continuous efforts to stimulate her various uh, material co and complex emotional needs has become too taxing and challenging and difficult. This includes instigating his lack of interest to observe certain days of the year that are very special to her. The main reason many women sleep around is because generally she is on the verge of breaking up with her benevolent partner who is not generous enough to support her lifestyle or not providing other needs, uh, needed benefits, especially if she has children that are not being cared for by her personal standards. The celibate woman, however, wants to offer her spiritual values first in a, to inspire a man uh, to monogam to, into a monogamous, monogamous relationship. What is interesting, though, is that many of the same women that may not have sexually satisfied their previous partners for selfish or biased reasons are basically hypocritical by willing to satisfy other people's partners for financial reasons without any ties. As in all things, there could be also other circumstances to elicit these transgressions, such as an abusive home life or revenge against her current partner due to his sexual infidelities. Yet, an unhappy sex life can also breed future home life disasters, such as continuing this vicious cycle of reality infidel or retaliatory infidelities. Uh, the stereotype is still nonetheless outrageous to committed men that have demonstrated love and honor to a woman's integrity. The average man truly does desire to be with one woman to fulfill his and her needs. He believes repetitive lovemaking should always be an undeniable obligation as both partners have equal unification with no right to use sex as power and therefore would be, it would be unthinkable to justify uh, having a horse behavior. This is something both partners should have learned early on as most couples are green uh, or naive to sexual influence and volatilities when their relationships is still new. This attitude, in part, is what mainly justifies men as being a slave of love to their wives. But if the husband breaks the chain of his spouse and falls into the temptations of adultery, then he becomes an abomination and is cursed and punished until he repents. How about that? Be advised, though, that all men and women now are not plagued with these sexual issues in their relationship and actually do religiously accommodate their sexual needs. To say that all women behave adversely and do not augment their sexual passion would be sexist criticism. But in truth, most women do not concede to their biological function of sexual withdrawal. Guided by the reality of man's nature's, uh, nature's secular rule to provoke a battle of the sexist syndrome between men and women that will more often than not create intimate problems that are quite challenging. In this case, the man's insatiable sex drive is almost a bothersome handicap due to its compelling nature. Uh, curves, handicap, it, definitely it's there. His significant other either ignores or does not recognize his sex drive to be a vital part of his makeup, 
which is why she can easily deny him priority status of their sexual activity and still be in love at the same time. Let me clarify the problem in deep detail. By nature, a woman needs her selected partner to believe that she has many other virtues to offer aside from the value he puts on her vagina. So in the absence of having a capt uh, captivating sexual urge, part of her wants to reject sex so that her mate can consistently show that he recognizes her true worth, such as wisdom, intelligence, creativity, intuitiveness, independence, and even raising children. It will take uh, the recognition of these type of attributes constantly, and perhaps a few spoils that don't hurt anything, <laughs> in order to stimulate her mind to feel as sexually aroused to want sex such as a man does. But it takes all those things. Uh, speaking of spoils, a man tends to be naive thinking his wallet is the main ticket to being a hero to his beloved in bed until he finds out she is accustomed to his frequent spoils uh, that are always expected, as well as his gallant services. Uh, she is therefore no more enthused than any other good deed he does, yet she still wants his labor of love to be con a condition to earn sex. Isn't that something? A man wants to be recognized too. Uh, but does not depend on it in order to have unconditional intercourse. So as a slave of love, he must work harder to please the unpredictable mind of a woman as each woman has a unique emotions that will randomly determine what level of her selected attributes for the day <laughs> is needed to possibly make love. And voila, her ability to possess man's power is proven. This will always be a daily challenge and gamble for a man hoping to stay in her favor with less drama and more sex appeal, trust me. Sometimes he wins, but more often he loses, and this is why it behooves the woman to understand his vigorous nature a bit more so that she can empathize, not to hold him hostage so much to step up his game in acknowledging her needs and values. In spite of it being irrelevant to a woman, by nature, a man is really the one in a constant state of giving a lot more of his own virginity than she does, including material contributions. Nonetheless, if she really believes her mate is at least aware of her values, then she must restore her emotional security and realize that it is morally wrong to allow sex fasting to be the tool for material and behavior control reasons. Overtaxing a man can push him right out the door. She must continue to share what she promised him as a partnership or commitment. If nothing is done, then nothing will change, and this systemic sexual epidemic will always handicap the virtuous growth of anyone's relationship. The solution? Just fuck them. <laughs> Actually, it would be easy to say that a man can just self-restrain sexual aggression. But what, but what is the point when any given day <laughs> he is still sexually teased, tantalized, or aroused just by looking at his partner, especially when she accentuates her endowments. He would therefore still harbor hidden frustration that will, will interfere with the morale of, his, of the relationship. Men that can manage this abstinence will, will typically have a much lower sex drive anyway, but the majority are still guided by their overwhelming desires, or if nothing else, just the memories of these desires is enough for a strong sex drive to a man. Let's face it, men are trained day in and day out to sexually desire his wife or significant other or partner, and even if he is lacking stamina, again, the memories of his own exotic times with her are never sidetracked, unless he is emotionally compromised or sexually handicapped. Be it as it may, let's start with the realistic solution for the masses. First, men need to stop complaining about women's sexual limitations when they don't disclose the real truth about their own compulsive sexual urges. They need to stop assuming that women automatically knows a man's passion and will give them the sexual attention they need without regard to their own feminine nature that is so very different. Countless men falsely assume that women desire sex just as much as they do. That is not true in, in most cases, but it's still oblivious to how women are less eager. Uh, men are definitely oblivious to how women are less eager. Uh, when expecting such a compulsive orgasm that a man will do, uh, would, would do almost anything to get. He must also confess to his partner the overwhelming hypnotic physical effect that her sex appeal has on his genetic need for a climatic rush and how pertinent it is to secure his loyalty to the relationship. He can only blame himself if, he's, if he does not communicate as this 
concealment exploits the wrong message to women in society that instigates the sexual cat and mouse game. Um, women are led to believe that a men's false claim of having effortless or equal control of his macho sex drive, which is merely a camouflage of his feminine side. Trust me, it is. Uh, men are too embarrassed to reveal the sexual weakness in comparison to her sexual to her sexual control, but he must let go of his ego in order to accomplish anything. On the other hand, if women can pardon the ignorance of the non-communicating men, uh, then she must trust the fact that there is a bi biological reason that hundreds of millions of men all over the world have similar aggressive sexual urges and that are not instigated by personal choice. So in understanding man's vulnerability and her ability to fulfill her man's needs, she just needs to love him for what he is and respect his supporting nature, to be gift enough with his personal attributes to warrant her passion and sexuality. She should then lower the bar in her relationship and not be so voracious for spoils. Make love to him with a graceful attitude and let the spoil offerings or gifts become optional for both partners without requiring a tip or trade-off. With this secure freedom, both will never feel as though they are selling themselves away. Committed or married couples vow to be as one is supposed to grow and avoid this sex division. She should also be aware that a woman's attitude during sexual performance is the most important part of a man's satisfaction. Being dead in bed will make all the difference in the world in him coming or going, if you know what I mean. The goal here is to satisfy each other without inhibitions and old school habits that are one-sided and made up rituals. Creating new school rituals that are unbiased with equality will liberate them from the old school sexist behavior. Adopting such an attentive attitude will avoid inciting a sexual revolution or the inherited nature of the cat and mouse game. And thus compel her to be a more willing intimate partner with goodwill so that goodwill can be reflected back from her spouse or significant other. She is obviously not expected to change her nature at will but it can certainly manip be manipulated by reason. As, men earlier, as, as mentioned earlier, her goal should be to have a bigger, more compassionate heart to task her own intellect that is, has been so conditioned to deny his, and in many cases, her own sexual desires. Supportive empathy should follow to inspire her to understand that it is, that it is in her best interest to help maintain a healthy spiritual bond and give more stability to their own sexual fellowship. This is a, from her point of view, this will be a clever, smart, and strategic choice that will maximize the strength of loyalty with greater peace of mind. Committed women will know that their diligent efforts for sexual intimacy without condition, all in all, is truly worth the act against the vile and powerful sexual temptations of society that is often underestimated by those who have blind ignorance and take for granted that just because they have this tie in the knot marriage makes them unprovoked and untouchable. This is an extreme, naive, and gullible attitude. There's a wicked world out there. Uh, and as equal partner, the woman must use her mother's wit and intellect to protect her man with the strategy of her own sexuality. Use your mind and body to protect your husband. Again, it, it's, it's, it's a wicked world. It's you against the world when it comes to your man. As his united commitment with her, with the woman, protects, embellishes, and stabilizes her well-being without the combined uses of other men that are temptations against her loyalty. He does the same thing. In the end, the women will therefore no longer possess man power to censor man's sexual behavior that will inevitably Problem solve man's sexuality. Amen. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex.